What's up guys, it's Blaze here and I am finally back with a new episode of our RPG combat tutorial series. Now, with the big changes happening with GMS 2022 and the frequency of these changes, I'm not sure how relevant the, the rest of this series will be, but I intend to finish it with a couple uh, new features, one of them being an escape button. We need to be able to run away from battle, but also we also need to have the damage numbers pop up. Once all that is done, I'm going to wrap up the series or maybe not even the uh, damage text even because the way sequences work now, uh, we can definitely use that, but I just haven't set up my project to be able to do that. So what we're going to do in this video is we will continue implementing our text. Unfortunately, I've had to fix a few things off camera. And the first one that you want to do if you were following um, my video from the last one is we need to put our text box onto a separate instance layer. The reason why we want to do that is actually because if we don't have it on a separate layer, if we have it on this base UI layer, it's going to disappear when we have all the other UI layers showing. So we don't want that. This is actually where having the UI on say a sequence uh, would be much better than using actual instance layers, but that's completely up to you. It changes how you will need to think in terms of programming. But overall, I think using sequences, uh, at least uh, for this kind of UI, I think might be much better, but let's continue on. The next thing that I need to do, at least for me, you probably don't need to do this, but I need to move my spawners, my two spawners here across and I need to move them past halfway. You might be wondering, why do I need to do that? Well, it's actually because the way that our spawner code uh, creates uh, units. If all of our units spawn on the first half, on the left side of the combat room, then they're all gonna be part of one team, and then if they're past the halfway point, they're gonna be another. And because our instances, our spawners, were all on essentially the same side, we won't be able to do anything and it would break the game. So that's the quick fix that I have. That's basically it uh, for the room combat, at least for now. And what we're going to focus on in this one is, and this is something that you guys will have to think about for your videos, uh, for your version of the game specifically, is what kind of text do you want to appear? So what I'm going to do is, let me just expand this out. I'm going to cut ahead and put in all the text that is relevant to my version of the project and I'll run through it with you guys one by one. All right, so before we get too far into the new messages that I've got, I've got two, I've put in two new variables. The one, the first one is selected unit, which we could just reference the global instead. But uh, for testing purposes on my end, I'm going to have this one here as a selected unit. And then we also have a dead unit, which we will store the ID of the unit that we are going to show a message for. And I'll get to that in a second. So let's have a look at our game messages. The first one is of course the enemies appear. This one is going to appear right at the start of the encounter. And the way that I've planned it out is that the enemies appear first and then we show this message. After this message has finished, we will then basically run through the rest of the code, right? Now, text one, this, this next line here, this is specifically for the player. It won't show if the AI is doing something, right? So if it's the AI's turn, this text won't show at all. Uh, let me zoom in a little more so you guys can see a little better. All right, so once again, this line here, text one, will be during, will only be for your turn, right? That's all that's gonna happen. Now these next three lines, two, three, and four, they're kind of self-explanatory. So line two, uh, text two, which is attacks, will show after any unit, right? Doesn't matter if it's an enemy or a player controlled unit, they will attack and this message will show. Now, if the attack will hit, uh, it'll do something else, 
we need to add in a new text for that. And then if the if they miss, obviously they're we're gonna show this message here, blah 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 missed. Of course, defend is defends, right? If you click the defend button or if you've developed your AI characters a little more, they might be able to defend as well. And then this message will show. Now this next line here, line five, I've had as text, but you can see in the commented out code that this is actually for the skills, right? So when we use a skill, this message will pop up. Now the reason why it's actually, I've got it uh, blocked out right now, commented out, is because we need to fix when these um, messages get read out. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, we are going to replace this with a function at a later stage, so don't worry about that just yet. All right, next one is, of course, not enough skill points, so if you want to use a skill that, and you don't have enough skill points, this will pop up. Of course, win and lose is here. And the last one is, of course, when a unit has no HP when they when the unit dies, then we need to have this message show. Um, we are missing one thing, and this is this is completely up to you. So if you want to add in a new text here, what I want you guys to do is, of course, write text like that, and whatever number you want to add in. So for us, we want to do ten, okay, and then after that you put the equal sign and then whatever else you want to put in. So for example, we want to add in, this is up to you, right? So if we want to add in, um, if a unit hits and they take damage, then we want to show that. Uh, whether you want to show that as text, and as numbers on the screen or just as text or just as numbers is completely up to you. That's what that's what this series is all about. It's just to give you guys a way to start thinking about how you can adapt some of these videos. And so for me, what I'm gonna do is, I believe it's going to be, we need to run a for loop actually. So as an example, just a really quick example here, um, attack hit, Would be something like that right and you add in as many text uh, elements as you want doesn't matter there's no limit so once you have all of that you have these two new variables and you have whatever messages you want to show in your game that will all appear here okay and then the next thing that we want to do is we don't need that one is in global left pressed now in the global left pressed event, we need to take this line here, which in the original version that we created actually restarts the room. We don't want that to happen. And actually we don't need this text current equals zero. We don't need to set that either. In fact, what we should be doing is text current should just be, actually it shouldn't even be that. It should be character current equals length. So we want, the, we want the message that we're currently showing to be that message, right? We don't want it to do anything else. Uh, so that's it for that. The, I believe the next thing that we have to do, and this is where you will have to kind of comb through your code one by one is, and it's mostly gonna be in things like the step event, is we need to essentially don't delete them. Don't delete them, but we need to comment out each and every single one of these show message lines here because we don't need them anymore. We have the text boxes to show us that already. So we're just gonna go through a few of them here, um, at least the ones that I know of. We're just gonna go through it. And they're really easy to spot, right? Because it says show message and generally speaking, we will have a, you know, a message that says, oh, you won or you lost. Right, and so you just need to do that. Broadcast message. We don't need that one anymore, right? We don't need to defend anymore. We don't need this one. Now for skill sent, yeah, okay, we'll comment that out for now because like I said, in the actual text box object, we don't have 
um, a space for that. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll re-implement that a later video. So I'm just going to go through any other ones. I believe that's all. I don't think so, actually. There should be a few more. And <laughs> this is probably going to be the most bothersome part of this video is to just comb through your code and get rid of all of that. Don't get rid of it, actually. No, don't get rid of it. Comment out all of that uh, essentially useless code at this point, if everything works. If everything works. That's, that's just the big... That is a uh, something that you should be aware of, is if everything works. So we need that. Okay, I think that's all of it. That should be all of it. I don't think that's it. I don't think there's any more. So it was in the manager's step event. Oh, here we go. There we go. Add one more. In the begin step event, we had the fix for processing unit death. And then we have the all the different phases for our character, uh, for our manager, the broadcast messages. And so if we try playing the game now, let me just try playing the game and we go into the combat room. Okay, so we can see enemies appear, blah, blah, blah. What will, all right, so this is where we are. It, it actually works, it's fine. Don't worry too much about it. Attacking works, all the code works. Everything's fine, everything's good. The reason why we have all of this and it's kind of just looping through is because we haven't actually programmed them into the game itself. That requires me to do a little more work. So don't worry about that just yet. Uh, just make sure that it does do all of this stuff and that it is running. Now, when you get to the end, you might get this error. And the reason for this error is because if you go back into your object text and you go to create, the text last here needs to reflect the last entry that you have. So for us, we have current text zero, but current text last would be 10. So that's it for now. The, there's re There really wasn't that much to do in this video. I do need to get back on track with the timing of everything and hopefully by the next, I don't know how much longer uh, these videos will go on for, but I do know that once we have the combat text implemented and everything looks good, just one more feature and then I'm still on the fence about having a video with damage numbers popping up, mainly because of some of the new uh, sequence text features that are that kind of make this series defunct and irrelevant. But I'll keep going. I'll stick to it. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. That's it for me, guys. And bye bye.